everybody, welcome back to Mini Bike Mike's Garage. We're still in the old Corvair van for those six or eight guys that are still watching the videos on this van. Um, I haven't put out a video in a little while, a couple reasons. It turned kind of super cold here in central Indiana. We had a stretch of eight to 10 days where it was zero or below. And quite honestly, I just didn't feel like coming out here in the shop and, and working when it was that cold. Uh, and then the other thing is, you can probably hear it in my voice, I've actually had a cold. Didn't really feel too bad, but it's just been, you know, I've been coughing and sneezing and blowing my nose every 38 seconds. And that's just not really conducive to a very good video for you guys to watch. So um, I feel like working today. So we're going to try and get some things done, going to film some things. I did film a couple little segments oh, a week and a half ago before all this kind of hit. And so I'm going to add those in now. You'll watch those. And then as soon as they're done, I'll bring you back to where we're at today. As I continue to get things ready for swapping over the electrical system in this Corvair van, one of the things I want to do is swap out the headlight switch. This is the old original switch, and there's really nothing really wrong with it. Uh, I just kind of prefer this style. It's a little easier to wire and, and so forth. Uh, so I'm switching them out. And normally, I've used a few of these in the past, and I'm just putting it through a hole in the dash. It's got this little piece that fits over top and screws in. Well, this particular light switch goes in this cluster here, uh, this bezel, and it's a little thicker. And then you've got this little cover that kind of fits here. So by the time you do all that, the threads aren't long enough on this little doodad here. You can see this is the one off of the original. You can see how just how much longer it is. Um, I had kind of hoped maybe that this one would fit on here, but it's their different diameter, so it won't fit. So I'm trying to think through. And then the other thing, uh, if I do, this catches by about one thread and it's, it's plastic and I'm afraid I'm gonna tear it up and then because it sits down inside this little cover here, I can't put anything on it to tighten it up. And it's, you know, it's just a real pain. Um, so I have found a bolt that I believe is the exact same thread as this. I won't know until I get a hole drilled down through the middle of it and see if it threads into the end of this holder. So I'm gonna take that out to the lathe chuck it up, drill a hole through it, trim it off to the length I need, and then we'll see if that fits in there. I don't even, like I said, I, I'm not even sure if that's the right thread. Let's see if I drilled a big enough hole. I, I seem to have got a big enough hole. Oh no. I thought for sure that was going to be the same thread. Oh, there it is. I just didn't have it in there square. Ah, perfect. Fantastic. So now I just have to go and cut that off. This thing, I, I just want to add three or four more threads to it. So I'm just going to cut this off just a little bit longer than what this piece is. 
Well, I think I've got a piece ready to go. And I went ahead and cut, oh focus, I cut some slots in the top, kind of similar to what the original piece had. So that, be, because this thing sits down inside this recessed area, you can't hardly get a, a socket or a wrench or anything on that. Um, and I have to have it sit down in that. I thought about using you know, a fender washer well, then it causes this to stick up so far. Well, then, then you can't put the handle on it. So we, we've kind of got to have this piece, which this is okay with me. I'm going to grab a screwdriver real quick. Yeah, so the slots allow me to kind of tighten it up a little bit. If it's gonna, this switch is gonna fit really good on the back. It, it doesn't turn or won't turn. Oh, that's perfect. <clears throat> and hopefully I can take that. Okay, well I didn't show you, but then it gets a the handle screws on there. There's a little set Allen screw. Perfect. I love it. All right, on to the next thing. One of the things I want to do is this, these tail lights. Um, someone at some point has put in different bulb sockets, and the bulbs stick out too far. And both of these lenses, the bulb has heated it up and melted the lens right there. So I've been thinking about what I want to do, and <laughs> uh, I know this might be kind of frowned upon but uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take some of these little LEDs I don't have them all today I've got they're coming tomorrow I've ordered them and I've ordered some red ones and I've got some of these amber ones and I'm actually going to drill three holes in this lens here and put three red red ones for tail light and brake light and then right over here on the edge I'm going to put drill another hole and put one of these amber ones for a turn signal. And hopefully that'll get rid of that spot right there. And then I'll just take this whole bulb holder completely out of this housing. To show you what that's gonna look like, this is the other lens from the other side. And you can see just how close that bulb is to that lens and why that's how it melted them. This one really got melted. This one really got hot to tell how white it is. But the plan is is to take these, take th like I said, take three red ones. they will pop in there and then actually this amber one will go in the end for the turn signal so let's see how much and you know I know it's not gonna cover it all and that's okay and I know you know somebody's gonna say oh well you run the lens these lens are somewhat readily available to get heck my buddy Greg over in Ohio who I got the speedometer off of he might even have some I can get but Tomorrow, when I get the other ones, we'll add more to this and you'll get to see what the finished product looks like. So I need to go out and drill the holes in this one. All right, so that brings us back up to where we're at today. Uh, and a couple things I did not video and did not show was obviously I have removed the entire wiring harness from the van and I built my own wiring harness that will get ran underneath from front to back. That's hopefully something we're going to try and get accomplished today. I have removed all the wiring up underneath the dash. And I got the eight circuit fuse block bolted to the firewall. The, the wiring here does not, it's not hooked up to anything yet. That's, that's something after we get the, uh, after we get this harness put up underneath the van, hopefully maybe we can start connecting some of that. I will show you these tail lights, and I'll be the first to admit that 
you know, they don't look all that great. But you know what? How, how do you know if you don't try? You know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And so that's what they turned out looking like. <laughs> they actually work. I hooked some power to them. They work great. Um, very visible and everything, but I just don't know if I like the look of that. I can get different lenses, so I'm gonna leave them this way now so I can just continue to work forward. Uh, the wiring is there, so when I do get ready to swap it, it should be just an easy swap, but uh, just so that you know how that turned out, that's what that looks like. I'm underneath the van, and for you five or six guys that watched the last video where I talked about the switches, that's the uh, the brake switch that we cleaned up. And I'm gonna try and reach up there and grab the brake arm. See how when you push the brake down, that arm moves away from the switch. So now I've got a, this is the red wire that came off of the new fuse block. And I put a connector on it and I need to get a pair of needle nose pliers and try and plug it into one of the pins, hopefully the one on the far side, uh, plug it into that. So power goes into that switch. And then when I get the new harness ran under here, there'll be another wire that hooks to it that goes back to the brake lights. Okay. All right, this should be fun. There it is. I may have to come up there. Let's get some wing fed through. All right. There's a whole lot of parking brake cables, speedometer cables, shift cables, maybe brake lines, all kinds of stuff coming up through there. Get up in there. I think we're getting somewhere, guys. Okay, now I'm gonna go back and back and feed that up through. The rest of that will, I'll zip tie it and tie it up the rest of that other stuff. There might be some clips that the old harness came out of I can put it in. All right, I made pretty good progress. I've got the wiring harness up underneath the van. I've got the uh, end coming up through the dash. Should have plenty of wire to be able to hook to my cluster and then put it all in. So I've got it ran back. I've got the back pretty much tied up. I got a couple wires here that uh, the blue one goes to my backup lights that I'm gonna put in, in this panel here. And then the brown one is for the illumination for the uh, license plate light. So those I still have to do. But I got everything else, wiring harness coming down. Uh, I got a lot of extra wire, so I just tied it up. I may shorten it when I get all done, but I just wanna make sure 
Uh, I've got everything first. I still need to change the alternator, but this white wire will go to the prong, the two prong plug on the alternator. Uh, I've got a purple wire run over to my coil. And so everything was pretty much done back here. <laughs> and I, uh, you know, two steps forward, one step back. I came up here and you'll see that the starter's missing. Went to hook up the starter wires and Mike twisted off the post, broke it right off the starter solenoid. So now I gotta pull the starter solenoid and replace it. Before I twist something else off, break it. always that one really I think I'm gonna throw a little bit of heat on that before I break it off great I don't want to break that ear off if it messes the threads up, that's okay. It's, you know, that's long enough. We could actually put a through bolt nut on it, but I definitely don't want to break this ear off of this. Oh, there it goes. There we go. Whew. It's amazing what just a little bit of heat does. And I don't want to touch that because I know I just heated that up, right? Of course, it doesn't want to come out now. Oh, come on. <laughs> you guys have these troubles? You believe that. Come off of there. Okay, there we go. So I'll run down to the parts store and hopefully they've got a new solenoid that I can put on there and replace that. Well, that was an expensive boo-boo. This and my Napa down the street, this thing was almost $61. Now, I realize I could have probably went online and got it cheaper somewhere or something like that, but I wanted to fix it today. Since they gave me a new spring, they'll put a new spring on it. There's a little rubber piece here, and I cut just a little chunk of it off. just to get things to kind of fit a little bit better. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. Now we're, now we're good. Well, maybe we're good. Well, let's start. Oh, 
All right, we're back to where we started from. Let's go put this, go put this in the uh, van and uh, finish hooking the rest of that wiring harness up. Fortunately, installing a starter on one of these couldn't be much simpler. Two bolts and everything can be reached from up here on top. Then before I put that on, let's go ahead and I need to finish up the making the wire to hook to the from the key switch to the starter solenoid. All right, there's actually one more wire that gets hooked to this uh, that will go right here with the positive post and that's the wire that goes from from here a t we'll run a 10 gauge wire from here back to the alternator and then i believe everything but those backup lights and the uh, license plate light back here will pretty much be wrapped up and done until i break something else i did forget to mention i do have one more wire this gray wire and that will go to that electric fuel pump that I installed. And, uh, but we're gonna, as of right now, since we're using the mechanical pump, I'm not gonna worry about that. I'll tie that up out of the way for right now. All right, I'm, that's exciting. So obviously we're back up underneath the van once again. And I have ran the red wire from the harness back down to the switch. So the brake switch is actually hooked up. Um, I haven't thrown power to the fuse block yet to be able to try it and make sure everything works. But uh, we'll eventually do that. I think we're getting close to being done under here. Uh, I do have a horn that at some point I'll we'll investigate that and see if we can't get that hooked up. But that's not a priority right now. So... I think I can let the, the van back down, get it back down on the ground, and we can continue to work up underneath the dash. The other reason I'm, done, I'm glad to be done under here is every time you touch something from where we had this glass bead blasted, the dust is just, it just falls all over and gets all over every place. I don't know if I'll ever get it clean underneath here. Well, my dash is a disaster of wires. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that spaghetti mess, but I've kind of tried to hot wire some things just to see what it's gonna look like. You guys wanna see it? Let me set you in a stand, let you see what I've got so far. You should see some uh, running lights come on. That's, the, uh, that's just the tail lights, the running lights. Now, if I hit the brake, and then I think I even have turn signals. Yeah. A little bit of time, we're gonna get there. I don't know if anybody noticed it, but uh, did you see I got a little green lens on my turn signal right there? See it light up? That's from subscriber David over in Niles, Ohio. David, thank you very much. Worked great, appreciate it. Well, I gotta say, I'm pretty, pretty happy with where I'm ending today. I've got the cluster back up into the dash. Um, this wire you see hanging here, that's the hot wire from the battery that feeds power to everything. So I still need to shorten it and crimp it to the fuse block. Um, my 
gas gauge is reading full because I don't have the wire. I gotta climb back underneath the van one more time and hook the, the wire to the fuel tank. Uh, I still need to hook up the backup lights and the illumination for the t uh, license plate. And I still need to swap the alternator, but uh, let's just, uh, let's, let's plug this red wire in and I'll show you what I got. All right, so for right now, I just have that red power wire from the battery just jammed up into that connector. It's not, not actually connected. I still need to do some more, maybe tying up with some wires and so forth, but uh, headlight switch. See the headlights come on, see the reflection. So uh, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's do parking lights. So we should have two LEDs for parking lights up here. And then I've got my LEDs for parking lights back here. And I left it so when you turn on the headlights, the parking lights up here actually stay on. I've been kind of paying attention to cars as they go going, as I pass them going down the road, and it seems like most of the time they have running lights or parking lights on. Now those same lights work as the turn signal. So I gotta turn the key on. You can see that one's flashing as a turn signal. Those little LEDs are actually really cheap on Amazon. And then I've got a turn signal over here. And even I've got the indicator in the dash hooked up. I've got the, the little green knob here that David sent me. It's flashing. I've got an indicator flashing there. If we go to the other side, Still got them. I took out the lighter and I put in a, uh, just a power, 12 volt power thing. I, I probably will plug a thing in there for a USB to have my, uh, so I can charge my phone. The wiper. I don't know if you can hear it, but you can see the, see that moving. Uh, let's turn the headlights on. I've got the dash lights. Uh, I've got this, this light in here. You can't, uh, can't see the dash lights are on, but uh, they are. Uh, let's see. So it's in neutral. But if I go into another gear, go into reverse, nothing. So I've got my neutral safety hooked up. Feel pretty good about that. So I still need to, like I said, change the alternator so I'll get my generator light working here. Let me know if the, the belt's on and I need to do something about oil pressure. Either get a idiot light hooked up for the oil pressure or I'm actually thinking about running a gauge, um, you know, a physical gauge, oil pressure gauge. Can, is, is 11 feet too long of a hose for it to pump? and read on a gauge, I, I don't know. I need to research that because, you know, obviously the engine's in the back and I, I probably will take out where they put this horn button and put a gauge right there for oil pressure. And I don't know if that's too far to pump it or not. I don't think so. Anyway, all right, I'm gonna wrap this up for right now. Uh, no, it won't be the end of the video, hang around. Tomorrow when I come back or whenever I'm in the shop next, I'll start working on those uh, uh, backup lights and the uh, license plate illumination. Hey everyone, so I'm back in the shop again today. We're still working on the Corvair van. I've got a few things laid out, some things I'd like to try and accomplish today. I've got a oil pressure gauge that needs to be ran up to the front, to the dash. I've got an alternator swap that I'd love to see have, hap have it happen. Uh, I've got some backup lights and I've got some license plate illumination lights. Now all of that's going to take just a little bit of work to get it all to happen. 
I think I'll start with the lights, then go to the alternator, and then maybe finish up and see if we can get that oil pressure gauge in. Now, whatever I get done today is what makes this video. Um, I'd like to have this wrapped up and get one posted for tomorrow. It's been a couple weeks since I had one, so let's don't waste any time. Let's, let's jump right into this. First thing we're going to do is the license plate lights. Now, you can see I've, there's some holes right here in this panel. These had some great big um, plastic pieces that bolted on. They're kind of expensive. I don't want to pay the money for them. So I just went and bought these cheap things at my local tractor store. Um, unfortunately, the holes are the opposite direction of what I need. I, I hate to drill more holes, but that's what's going to happen. I'm going to drill a couple holes to run these bolts through, um, and then we'll wind up plugging those holes so that they don't show. But I'm going to put one of these on, on each side. Um, luckily, the little rubber grommet piece comes off of these, and I'm going to use it for a template, template, or however you say it, for the bolt holes here. All right, before I put the, the lights on, I just bought some kind of shouldered or flanged bolts that I'm going to use to cover these other holes for right now. I thought about welding them, welding them in, but there again, I, you know, maybe one of these days I'll put the right the right light holder on. Highly doubt it, but maybe get rid of the burr that's on the back side. There we go. It's a little bit better. All right, I think I feel pretty good about that. There was a, I had a wire already strung back here for the lights. Uh, so I've got those all mounted. I did have to run an extra ground wire because apparently this panel right here through the piano hinge is not grounded. Uh, battery is hooked up. Let's turn on the lights and see what happens. What do you guys say? Oh, perfect. Perfect. All right, so let's jump on now and put the backup lights. And I think I'm going to put them on each side somewhere right in here. Yeah, there's, it's actually hollow underneath that battery. Just a big cavity that I can reach back up into here. So that'll be real easy to get to the wiring. So yeah, I've got a, and then this is the backup wire, that blue one. So I've got to go get a hole saw and let's drill a hole and see how that goes. I guess before we get too crazy with this, we ought to get some kind of measurements so that we can make it equal on the other side. So about three and a half inches from that seam. And about eight inches up. All right, we'll get this one drilled and then we can, we'll make measurements or get it marked.
Okay. Uh, are in there somewhere. All right, let's try that. So we went three and a half inches over from the seam and about 11 inches down from the from where the uh, tail light. I don't know if my drill is going to have enough stuff to do it. Let's go get a fresh battery. All right, take two on this. Let's, well, we just got the hole. Yeah, so three and a half and oh, maybe 11 and a sixteenth. Well, that was battery came right off the charger. And it's no good. Time to get a different drill. All right, take three. Let's see if I can break my hand with this quarter drill. I actually did do that one time, drilling a hole with a hole saw and thing caught and broke a bone in my top of my hand. Sorry, I'm sure that was noisy. Uh oh, did I drill too big a hole? I thought, sure, these were for two and three quarter. It's going. Okay. Whew. Had me scared for a second. I thought I, thought I drilled too big a hole. Uh, where's the light? Now I'll have to pull this back out and add some length to those wires. But That, my friends, is what we're going for. Something like that. So I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side and then wire those up to that blue wire and then we'll come back and see how it looks well i think i have everything wired and in place uh let's see we need to put the battery on all right put the battery cable on Let's go up and put it in reverse and see what happens. Let's see, reverse is up. So you should have seen lights come on. Did you see lights come on? Yes, fantastic. And then as I shift through the other gears, you should not see lights. So, okay, we're currently in reverse. There's neutral, there is drive, and there is low. And I'm going to let you, I'm not hearing you guys shout at me, so I'm assuming that there are no lights in these other gears, correct? Great, so that backup switch does work. So one more time, let's go back to reverse. And we have backup lights. All right. Fantastic. Let's get the uh, take a look at that alternator now. The next thing I need to tackle is on this alternator. This is the Corvair alternator, and I don't know if you can see it, but it has two mounting holes right here. It the, the alternator 
does not have any adjustment to it at all. It mounts fixed to the engine, and then the tension for the belt is provided by a pulley that's on opposite of the alternator. So the alternator itself doesn't move. New style alternators, you know, they pivot, and then you have a you know a locking, you know, and, and you actually can adjust them to adjust the tension on the belt. Um, so this isn't going to bolt right onto the Corvair. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the pulley and the top half of the alternators and we're going to swap them. And one of the other reasons we're going to do that is that the Corvair engine runs backwards of most vehicles. Um, and so the fan, the blades here face a different direction to pull air, or I don't know if it pulls it or pushes it or what it does. I think it pulls it maybe through the alternator. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but I want to make sure I've got the correct rotation going. It's my understanding that the generator itself doesn't care which direction it's spinning. It's going to work the same, um, but we, we're we going to want to swap the cooling fans so that it does, uh, you know, it does go the right direction. Now, I'm sure... This is not the correct way to do this with a pair of channel locks. But this is what I'm going to do. Okay. And then there are four bolts. On the back side, Probably be better if you had like a rubber mallet than Okay, so that's the part we want to come off of there. There's a little bushing. All right, so we can Set that one over here. Now let's see if we can get this other one apart. Oh, the on the new one, the, the fins and the pulley were separate. This one seems to be all one piece. It is. Okay. So I thought. There it goes. Oh, stay in there. I don't want to pull the... There we go. I didn't want to pull the whole center up out of there. I may already have it out of the bearings or something. It doesn't sound right now. Oh well, that's that's okay. We're not after that piece. This is the piece we're after. Hmm. I don't know which one of those I'll need yet. There are bearing. You know, I should probably. Swap that, but that feels pretty daggone good. I think I'll leave that alone. 
Okay, so I want the wiring to be on top. Like I said, I've never done this. You know what? I think I will swap. Okay, I'm seeing a difference now. I think I will swap the, the bearings on the inside. This one has a this raised part, and this one's flat. And I don't think this bearing holder is allowing it to come down and slide down over that shaft all the way. So... I'm going to go ahead and change those out too. Okay, now we're down to where we're looking the same. All right. Hopefully the bolt orientation is the same. It looks to be. I actually like having the shoulder bolts that were in the original one. I think I'll go with those. Go. All right, that's probably tight enough. That was on the outside, I believe. All right, so let's see what we've got now when we go to put this together. All right, wiring on the top. There we go. Let's try that. Okay, that looks pretty good. So the original alternator had this small spacer instead of this big one. So let's put the small one back on there. Oh yeah, perfect. Okay. You know what? Let's go with the nut that was on the... So we know that nut was on that threaded shaft to begin with. How about that? And I think we're good. So that's uh, that's going to get let us, allow us to put a new style alternator onto the Corvair, and it's going to bolt right up into the original brackets. Before I tackle putting the alternator back in, and here is its mount right here. I think I want to jump to the oil pressure gauge. This is the original sending unit. It's not really focusing on it right here. There it is. And so I think I'm going to pull that out and I have purchased a gauge and some copper tube. And like I questioned earlier in the video, 
you know, we've got to run it all the way up there. We've got a good 11, maybe 12 feet. Does an engine pump oil that far? I would think it would. I don't know. We're going to find out. So I got to grab a, a wrench, actually probably just a pair of pliers and pull that sending unit out first. I've uncoiled that copper line and have it running down through there. I taped off the end to try and keep crud from getting in it. I have jacked up the van one more time. I thought I was done getting underneath this thing, but I'm gonna see if I can't run that from front to back. Now I know there's gonna be some places that I'm gonna to have to probably put some uh, you know, fuel line over it or some rubber hose or something to try and protect it so it doesn't rub through, but we'll, uh, we'll get it in place and then we'll cross that bridge. So I've got all the copper line running up underneath the van. And I really think what I want to do, there's this old horn button right here that I'm not going to be using. I may drill a two inch hole right and put that gauge right there, but I'm not really ready to do that today. So I think I'll just cut off cut off a little extra of this and let's just uh kind of let it hang maybe we'll set it in that maybe we'll set it in that ashtray and then make a decision on if i'm going to cut that dash and then i can shorten the line and do those things when i need to Well, that uh, cutoff tool somewhat flares that. I'm going to have to to put this little piece on here. I'm going to have to sand that down. So give me just one second. Now let's try this again. Make sure I don't drop that crazy little piece. Oh, yeah, slid right on there that time. And, yeah, there's some electrical to need to be hooked up on this still also to illuminate the light and all that good stuff but i'll come back and do that just get you to Oh, kinking it too much. Can we get you to hang there? <laughs> Dag on you. Let me, uh. Oh, well. Okay, I'm going to hold on to it. I hope you guys can see that. Let's see, uh, let's fire it up and see what happens. Oh, you know what? I've got the uh, battery cable off. Give me a second. All right. Let's try this again. So when I turn the key, we should see, if you guys can see the dash, a generator light come on. Yeah, it does. All right, so I've got that. I'm gonna hold, how can I hold all this so it doesn't fall over? All right, let's see if she'll start. Look at that, almost 40 pounds. I'm liking that. And my generator light went off. That's good. So my generator's charging. My alternator, I guess.
Nice! Awesome. It drops back down. I know I'll keep an eye out for leaks. I, I think I'm eventually going to, like I said, put a hole right here and mount that right there since there's already a hole there. There's nothing behind that now that keeps us from really doing that. So I'll do that. Almost ready to be road worthy. But there's one more thing I've got to do. Let me let me jump out of the out of the van and, and we'll talk about that. Okay, some of you guys may have figured out from watching my videos over the last few years that I'm kind of hard-headed. Uh, I don't listen very well. Um, and my parents will back you up on all this. I, uh, I don't do very well with being told, oh, you know, you, you can't do that or you should do this this way. or thing. I like to kind of figure things out on my own, you know, right or wrong. You know, yeah, I, I make a lot of mistakes, but I've always... I've always believed that you learn more through mistakes than you do anything else. So I don't mind making a mistake here and there. Um, so as I've been working on this van, it's, it's gotten, you know, some people in the Corvair community have started watching the videos and, and some things they've saw them. And, and I've had some guys message me and say, hey, there's one thing you, before you take this out on the road that you really need to um, maybe make some adjustments to. And, um, and I, I'm... Going to, I'm going to follow their advice on this one. Uh, seeing that I've already had one fire <laughs> in this, and that was kind of scary enough, I, I definitely don't want any other fires. So basically, you know, this air-cooled engine runs considerably hotter than what a normal water-cooled engine runs. And any kind of gas fumes or, you know, any spills or anything immediately ignite on one of these. And some guys have made the comment about the filter and the rubber lines, and they're telling me that you know you should never have any kind of rubber fuel line in the engine compartment. So I think I'm going to heed that advice, and I'm going to uh, disconnect. This is the fuel line coming in. Disconnect this line, and then it goes up and down. And there's actually another where they've spliced it in um, real close to where it caught fire the first time. There's a little rubber connection right there too. So I'm going to do away with all that. I'm going to get a solid steel line and run and go all the way as close to the tank as I can. And when I do that, I think I'm going to go ahead and move that fuel pump where I had that fuel pump back here because there again, I don't want the rubber lines in the engine compartment. Let's put everything up underneath. Uh, fuel pumps work better as pushers than pullers anyway, so that'll uh, that'll be that'll just be a little bit nicer. And then I think once I get that changed, then I'm about ready to take it out on a put some legal plates, not not these that I have on here, and take it out for a spin. So anyway, so that's what that's that's my one thing I still need to do. So appreciate you guys following along, watching the videos, and. Uh, Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, hit me a like, subscribe, and all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you on the next video. Guys, have a great day. See ya.